some of the topics covered in this video. Whistleblower testimony. Government and scientific sources verifying mind control. Mind control capabilities explained. How mind control is done. History of mind control. Targeted individuals. The covert transhumanism era. Black ops perpetrated with black project technology. Technological mind tricks. Black Project AI, Electronic Telepathy, and Thought Surveillance, a.k.a. Remote Neural Monitoring. How Mind Control is Done The three main methods I know of are by implant, electromagnetic methods, and by drugging. Electromagnetic mind control appears to be the most abundant and effective. Electromagnetic mind control can do pretty much anything an implant can do. Electromagnetic mind control from what I could gather from military sources consists of frequencies and waves. RF energy and microwaves appear to be the most common remote influencing directed energy sources. A lot of people speak about HARP and its capability to remote influence with RF energy. What they may not know is cell phone towers use RF energy as well. Whistleblowers have indicated cell phone towers have been rigged to be used as directed energy weapons and there are several stories of mystery rogue cell phone towers being installed likely by the NSA. Brain waves are low frequency electromagnetic waves. Low frequency electromagnetic waves are RF energy. So essentially our minds emit RF energy while thinking. Sometime in the 20th century the Black Projects deciphered the mystery of brain waves and advanced neuroscience and began weaponizing it against the population of the world. The three main sources I estimate being the technological origin of the covert transhuman control grid are cell phone towers, directed energy weapon satellites, and harp-like installations, although there may be additional sources I'm unaware of. In 1974, Yale neuroscientist Jose Delgado spoke to Congress. Among some other things I will cover later in the video, one thing he said was this. Someday armies and generals will be controlled by electrical stimulation of the brain. Dr. Jose Delgado was also part of MK Ultra, the infamous government mind control program in the middle of the 1900s to the 1970s. This scientist who did not want his identity revealed is employed by the U.S. government and has done secret RF weapons research. He believes that tests done with the LIDA and similar machines prove that humans are susceptible to remote alterations of mood and awareness. Certain kinds of weak electromagnetic signals work exactly like drugs. And so the promise is that anything you can do with drugs, you could do with the right electromagnetic signals. Induce uh, basically what would be considered hallucinations in people direct them to uh, do things against their so-called better judgment. How easy would it be to assemble a weapon from existing off-the-shelf parts? In three weeks, um, I could put together a weapon that would uh, take care of a whole town. This is a Tesla coil. It was invented some 90 years ago, but now a growing number of experts in the United States feel that it may form the basis of a new generation of Soviet weapons. They are known as radio frequency or RF weapons because they operate in the radio frequency spectrum. Their existence is noted in this U.S. Department of Defense publication, which says the Soviets could use them to destroy components of missiles, to interfere with radar and other electronic systems, and even to alter human mind functions. The concept of RF weaponry was predicted at the turn of the century by Nikola Tesla, an American who had emigrated from Yugoslavia. Well, it's, you know, it's like I've said in other, uh, with other reporters and other shows that guns and taxes won't control everybody. Yeah. Uh, electromagnetic technology will. Wow. Some say the brain is too complex to understand. I know that as false. The brain has been deciphered by Black Project scientists. Black Project science is much more ambitious than any public science. Internal mind control can be put into two major categories, mass mind control and individual mind control. 
Low frequency electromagnetic wave installations like HARP can be used for mass mind control of larger populations. Something they would be strategically doing with mass mind control is apathy in the masses or rage for protesters that the controllers would like to turn violent for agenda oriented reasons. Electrical signals, electrical interference, electromagnetic radiation from outside your body can affect your mood because your brain works on electricity and hormones. Electrical signals produce hormones that affect your mood and everything else, your health, all of that. So external um, electrical signals which are covered in detail on our EMF page. I suggest everybody go over there and look at uh, how cell phones, Wi-Fi, and even EMF and, uh, can affect your brain and otherwise. But let's save that for another video. Today we're talking about HARP. Um, HARP produces extremely low frequency waves. Elf waves are up, up to 100 hertz or once more naturally occurring, but they can also be produced artificially such as Navy's Project Sanguine for submarine communications. Elf waves are not normally noticed by the unaided senses, yet their resonant effect upon the human body has been connected to both physiological disorders and emotional distortion. Infrasound vibration up to 20 hertz can subliminally influence brain activity to align itself to delta, theta, alpha, and beta wave patterns. Inclining an audience towards everything from alertness to passivity, infrasound could be used tactically as elf waves endure for great distances and it could be used in conjunction with media broadcasts as well. Electrical signals produce hormones that affect your mood and everything else, your health, all of that. I have observed firsthand my brain chemistry change very acutely and obviously unnaturally via electromagnetic methods. I have found through research, experience, and my own contacts that the shadow government sources use the brain as its own miniature drug lab with electrical signals. According to some estimates, we cannot track $2.3 trillion in transactions. $2.3 trillion with a T. With trillions of unaccounted for Pentagon spending, CIA black ops like cocaine dealings generating a black project money flow, and how massive the military industrial complex is. There is no doubt in my mind that they have spent billions, if not trillions of dollars on setting up the covert transhuman control grid. The mind of any living being is open source to technology. The mind has no firewall. Every function of a mind has scientific mechanics that are required to function. I have learned from at times brutal experiences that every mechanic of the mind is open source to technology. Dr. Jose Delgado is one of, if not the most famous neuroscientist of the 20th century. He wrote a book. 
following are quotes from his book which is based on scientific observation. I am one of the most severe electronic harassment cases around. I have had countless technological experiences exposing what Black Project technology can do over the last seven plus years of my overt targeting. I will now list all the mind control capabilities I could think up over a period of time, all based on first hand experience. I can personally promise you that every single one of these capabilities is absolutely true. It is all fact to me. Thought surveillance, control of concepts, implanted conscious energy, often serve to corroborate implanted ideology, memory manipulation, translation from concept to linguistic control, speech control, i.e. forced speech, covert methods, and overt methods control of how awake or tired one is, control of how buzzed or high one is on any substance, synthetic highs, control of body language and facial expressions, body control, I was actually shown that body control is used to rig pro sports, technological possession often construed by the controllers as demonic if overt, Technological channeling, often construed as a facade that the channeler is dealing with real entities instead of just artificial intelligence. This technology is shrouded in illusions. For example, people often think of it as demons. Control of hypnotic and other types of regressions. Negation of soul and genetic influence on consciousness. In other words, cellular and genetic attributes and cellular and genetic wisdom negation with technology. Negation of one's life learned lessons, conceptual knowledge fragmentation, technological mind tricks, technological illusions. Technology can create illusory symptoms of any real ailment or illness. Synthetic OBE experiences indiscernible from authentic OBE experience, synthetic astral experiences, also indiscernible from authentic astral experiences, that is if OBE and astral is not technological, which I consider, although I'm sure that's wild to some people. 
synthetic dreams, virtual reality. This is VR while awake or asleep. Creation of synthetic but very authentic shamanic or psychedelic experiences. Remote viewing presented as natural ability that is really technological. Psychic ability or events that are really based on remote influencing technology. Electromagnetic stimulants. Synthetic optics. That's altering what the eyes send the brain. Synthetic hearing. Synthetic tastes. Synthetic smells. Synthetic emotions. Synthetic pain signals. Synthetic sensations of any variety. Both good feeling and bad. I'm sure the Black Ops agents have some very nice technological sensations. Control of hunger. Exact cravings. Control of conscious focal point. Focus. Enhancing of the senses, emotional blunting, mimic cellular addiction symptoms, internal voice synthesis, control of discernment, negation of true analytical thought, synthesized analytical thought, control of logic and how one sees that logic, subconscious control, subliminal programming, synthetic sexual anhedonia, arousal, synthetic intolerances or cravings to various foods, Control of motivation, control of the mind in all its different facets. These are all done by artificial intelligence and electromagnetic technologies. I realize some people might have some sort of cognitive dissonance to my testimony that someone had experienced all these things that is more or less a civilian. Well, my story is a bit more complicated than that, but... Basically, I know all this is real. I know I experienced it, and take it as you will. I basically, they absolutely unleashed on me in the last seven to eight years. And that is a big way how I know all this technology. There are many ways to control memory. The ways I have personally witnessed are implanted memories, deleted memories, restricted memories, fragmented memories, and dimmed memories. There are several different types of implanted memories, such as disguising a concept as a memory, or actually physically creating a memory with I imagine nanotechnology in the brain. Deleted memories is somewhat well known already. Restricted memories can be done in real time or by severing neural pathways to memories. With these methods, memories are eventually retrievable. Fragmented memories creates a mental environment where parts of memories are not included in mental cognitions. Dimmed memories is probably the most common. Thought suppression techniques such as dimming memories is something the shadow government do according to their agenda. The agenda is what is holy to these groups. They believe they are God. I have learned from unique experiences, memories work in layers. There are many layers present for any given memory. Smells can be tied to a memory as a layer, concepts as a layer, emotional programming as a layer, and much more. The details of a memory are multi-layered and multi-dimensional. I have experienced electronic harassment where I get the core of a memory restricted or deleted, yet I can still tell what the subject was about. This usually happens when I am getting things deleted from my mind in real time. When something gets deleted from my mind, basically getting ripped out of my mind by some sort of mind suppression technology, it is abrupt and obvious that it is an external source. This is one reason why I cannot do interviews or speak at any conferences. Alright, so, uh, Duncan, I have one more question for you, and this is probably one of the most important questions I'm going to have for you. Recently, you know, I've experienced something that can possibly get me murdered, and this is something that throughout the years I know they've been working on. I don't know if it took 30 years for them to finally get me, you know, to be able to do exactly what I'm about to try to explain. But um, 
forced speech. I mean, I could be literally sitting here having a conversation with you, and it's not me talking. You know, literally, I am saying word for word, verbatim, not what I'm being told, but what I feel is going through me. Yeah. I mean, okay. it, it, it's crazy. I mean, I, I could, I could, be, I could be trying to tell you, Duncan. Hey, do you see that cute girl over there? Next thing you yeah. know, I'm talking about the guy down the street. Is you know? Yeah. So. The way you experience it would be, the, I, I guess, like Tourette's. Almost like uh, you can't control what is coming out of your mouth. And uh, it's not what's in your thought processes, but you're speaking somebody else's verbiage. And, uh, and yes, it does take a long time for that usually to occur. Because remember, your brain's been mapped out. Mm -hmm. And uh, so they've, they've uh, mapped out your audio cortex, you're cloned with another person or a machine, and so pretty soon the brain will uh, bypass your uh, cerebral cortex and be able to shoot out vocabulary that you have no intention of saying. And it, it's, I hate to say it, but it's pretty common with most TIs. Uh, uh, so I'm, I'm not the only TI who's no, not even this. close. No, there are a lot of them. There are a lot of them. Uh, this is not new, uh, not a new phenomenon. And in fact, that's where the term forced speech came from. Is probably back in the 80s. Uh, people in the wait same a minute. So you're saying that they've been working on forced speech since the 80s? Yeah. This is 2015. I know. So you can imagine how uh, advanced the weapon systems have become. I have experienced forced speech to the point I cannot do interviews when people ask. It just doesn't matter if you say it was forced and mind control. People register it as saying it, so breaking the programming is tough. People do not comprehend mind control very well. Speech can be controlled both in overt and covert methods. Overt methods are often to character assassinate targets or to threaten and or intimidate them into cooperating. Covert methods are used in unison to controlling the person's mind. I have witnessed this takes place on mainstream media, presidential debates, as well as U.S. president speeches at times. You might ask how I could witness such things, and I don't blame you. Basically, at the beginning of my rabbit hole, I was being tortured in all kinds of unique ways. One way they would torture me is to political speeches or sporting events. They knew what would happen in both, in, into some amount of the future, down to the mannerisms of the speaker and the last play of the game. Technological mind tricks is basically using advanced technology on a person and or an environment to convince targets of illusions. Technological mind tricks are more abundant than many realize. I've been able to pick many of them up after sussing them out in my own case. This technology has interacted with quite a large amount of people, however it is almost always misidentified as other sources. I have found advanced artificial intelligence is at some of the deepest parts of the rabbit hole.
The research is led by Dr. Michael Persinger. Basically, at any given time, all experience is due to those portions of the brain that are most metabolically active. If we can simulate that by applying complex, meaningful magnetic fields to the brain, we can also induce those experiences. These experiences are so strong, they're utterly real for the person who has them. They can be as profound as a religious conversion, yet we can generate them with a machine. But where are the limits? What else can people be made to believe? But well, one thing that's really clear, you can control the person's experiences and they don't know they're being controlled. That's why this technology is a potentially powerful one and has a two edge to its sword. secrets, their power is eroding. The NSA's Signals Intelligence is a program to remotely monitor magnetic fields created by electrical signals. And this applies to remote neural monitoring, aka thought surveillance. I am unsure what percentage of the population is under remote neural monitoring. But logically, I can estimate that intelligence agencies once developing these technologies would be pretty ambitious with these programs. It is artificial intelligence keeping track of thoughts, not real people. Here is an article from a science news website reporting current neuroscience catching up to black projects a little bit. I have had my body controlled countless times by technology. If my situation was happening 400 years ago, I would no doubt be considered a demonic possession case. I have been told I will be controlled to do something with my body via microwave hearing, and shortly after I refuse to do it myself, my body is controlled to do it while I just watch. Like most of these mind control abilities, artificial intelligence is behind the actual carrying out of the decision making for targeting and control, in most cases. Here is an article from Bam Margera's website about a neuroscientist who sets up electrodes and controls people's body. This is already public technology. All these abilities I speak about in this video will be proven eventually. Technology can create illusory symptoms of any real ailment or illness. Additionally, technology can create or cure a large number of illnesses. Some of the more severe targeted individuals get many illusory symptoms of illnesses that mysteriously appear and disappear at an AI's will.
at times to never show up again. This is a sign of experimentation, but in my experiences, the technology they have that does this stuff is all perfected technology, or almost all perfected technology. Two bigger mysteries to the shadow government I am aware of are the mechanics of the soul and apex artificial intelligence methodology. I have been tortured countless times by Black Project technology using synthetic signals in the brain. After all these experiences in a kind of hard knocks of the universe situation, I have learned that anything the senses experience can be synthetically reproduced by end game advanced technology. Brain and mind mapping are done to targets who are going to be mind controlled. In many cases, this can basically be a type of on-call mind control type situation. Pretty much like the movie The Matrix where people turn into agents. Mind control works in the same way. They psych profile people, map out everything about them, and then use them as assets in any situation the agenda calls for for their particular profile. I firmly estimate that this is done on all major forums and in places of social attention. The surveillance grid is extensive. Some of the things intelligence agencies have at their disposal are thought surveillance aka remote neural monitoring and extensive surveillance of the internet and global communication, all while Post-Singularity Black Project Artificial Intelligence crunches the data and develops psych profiles for people. These psych profiles are used to perpetuate and proliferate the agenda.
It is artificial intelligence behind technological mind control. What happens is an AI is computing while doing thought surveillance on a target. The AI has data clouds that are comprised of different things to do to someone. When the AI decides to mind control someone, technology will suppress natural thinking while the brain is controlled via electromagnetic methods. The shadow government AI is very sophisticated. Implanted conscious energy is a very potent and effective technique where electromagnetic signatures are generated inside a mind. Any conscious energy in existence can be reproduced by exotic electromagnetic technology. Internal voice synthesis can be done by matching electromagnetic signatures to a mind while suppressing organic mental processes. I will cover electronic telepathy later in the documentary. experienced a technological state of consciousness where it is absolutely impossible to fall asleep no matter what I do. No matter how long you have stayed up with technological stimulants, one is incapable of being tired. I imagine these would be useful to soldiers like Navy SEALs, but unfortunately the shadow government is irresponsible enough to use it on civilians to create bad scenarios for them.
and intellect based mind is easier to mind control. This is done partly because complex emotions are harder to simulate for certain people for the shadow government. Emotions are harder to get right than an intellect based mind for mind control. Fluid AI with implants and or electromagnetic technology can control discernment, both negating it or creating it synthetically. I can't be hypnotized by a human with external mind control. However, with technology I have witnessed myself go into mind control induced trance states of several different kinds. Doesn't matter if a human can't put you in a hypnotized state, technology can. Typically these trance induced states are undetectable at the time when they happen. I have caught them with self reflection in other ways. Some of them are overt. I'm sure the brain has functions that happen when someone is being hypnotized. Any type of regression can be created with endgame technology. They can make people say anything. Sexual pleasure can be negated by technology. Sexual pleasure can also be created by technology. Orgasmic feelings can be put anywhere on the body with remote technology or implants. Mental sexual arousal can also be created by electromagnetic technology. One thought suppression technique is to dim memories, I imagine usually upon their creation within the mind. What dimming a memory is, is making a memory less likely to fire, but it is not completely blocked off from firing. The shadow government likes methods that are as covert as possible. Dimming a memory is tactically sound in terms of exposure. A mind matrix is basically a system for thinking. A mind matrix is behind the mechanics of what is served to one's perception. Basically the mind has an operating system. Everyone has a natural mind matrix. A mind control matrix is taking over a person's thinking and setting them up with a, a synthetic mind matrix. A mind control matrix is how they structure the thinking within a fully transhuman person. Feelings, emotions, beliefs, as well as external environmental factors are used to keep one trapped in a certain mind control matrix. Manchurian candidates are in lifelong created mind control matrixes, for example. Some of the more immutable from dislodging mind control matrixes have been created over a long period of time in a target's lifetime. I will cover Manchurian candidates later in the video. Early on in my targeting situation, I was stuck in various different 
mind control matrixes. There are two different kinds of mind control matrixes I am aware of that the shadow government attempts to control, if you simplify it to the simplest form. One is manipulating organic matrixes, and the second taking over someone's mind, basically technological possession and serving them 100% mind controlled thoughts to corroborate the matrix. Organic matrix manipulation is done to targets who will not be continued to be mind controlled. Full-time mind control relating to the mind matrix, one's own discernment is not on the table. Every process of thinking is being controlled in the second example as to not dislodge the personal psyop. I believe the synthetic matrix people talk about so much is largely perception based. This might be one of the more common forms of mind control. Translating concepts into language can be controlled with technology. This is artificial intelligence based. This can also be a form of thought suppression, throwing a wrench into someone's expressive ability by not letting them properly form linguistics from concepts. We are part of a non-consensual human experimentation which uses highly advanced electronic technology without our informed consent or knowledge. And I am also targeted and this is my story. My name is Sandra Field. I'm an architect, recipient of Who's Who of, Ameri of Women in America Achievement Award and have run a successful business for over 28 years. My life and livelihood have been compromised for the last 11 years by being attacked by electromagnetic radiation torture and by organized stalking. Thousands of Americans are currently suffering from chemical, electromagnetic, psychological, and physical torture. Our servicemen, prisoners, and thousands of unknowing, innocent civilians are currently being lamed, tormented, and tortured as a result of military research, medical research, pharmaceutical research, physiological and psychological studies that have virtually destroyed participants' sanity, physical well-being, reputation, and privacy. Dr. John Hall. My name is Dr. John Hall. I'm a medical doctor from Texas. Um, as a physician, um, relative to some of what you're hearing today um, in the community, we are seeing an alarming rate of complaints of use of electromagnetic weapons. Uh, microwave auditory effects, silent sound spectrum, EEG cloning, which has taken the lab out of the laboratory and into the home. Most of these, from the research that we reviewed, can be done remotely. Uh, it seems to be more weapons research than medical research. Um, I've personally corresponded with upwards of 1,500 victims, all complaining of identical complaints from every state in the nation. Um, of being exposed to electromagnetic radiation, um, non-ionizing radiation for the use of cognitive control or behavior control. Um, I've submitted a, a paper to you, and there's a, another paper submitted to each member from another physician in Kansas City um, alluding to the same thing. I uh, had received microwave harassment actually on and off for a number of years where they were trying to project images of suicide and uh, various states of basically emotional mood management. This was confirmed to me in 2001 by a contact at the National Security Agency. 
I'm not sure if he's retired at this point, but I talked to him recently. He worked in the communications intelligence division of NSA for 25 years at, uh, this is right after 9-11, a month after, when he came to meet with me at my, at my part-time job at the time. And he basically was working at a kind of like, an, uh, in that division, he was working, he was examining different types of abuses that were going on in the NSA. And he stated to me personally that my case fell within the realm of potential abuse in the agency that he was investigating. But he basically also confirmed to me that what I experienced in terms of some, just the tip of the iceberg of part of my experiences with the emotional projection, he said that that was very common and that they were using microwaves because they had taken really advanced EEG images of people in different emotional states, mapped those digital brainwave uh, signatures, emotional clusters of people feeling different emotional states. They said that they can take those, those digital brainwave signatures, piggyback on a certain bandwidth of microwaves as a carrier wave, and they can target people worldwide without need for a local transmitter. He confirmed all that to me and said that they use satellite to target anybody they want, and it's a very common procedure within this portion of the NSA, which is, her which is horrendous that they actually let this go on. I've also made contact with many scientists over the years, underground scientists who used to work in various intelligence areas, who've also confirmed this and much more, much more beyond technologies, where they use longitudinal electromagnetic wave technologies, technology that Tesla first developed. My name is Derek Robinson, and I'm president of an organization called Freedom from Covert Harassment and Surveillance. And I represent uh, many of uh, the people that are in this room today, as well as hundreds of those across the, across the U.S., uh, many thousands uh, across the U.S. who are not in our organization, who are being targeted with, without their knowledge, as well as those worldwide, millions, uh, thousands, uh, speaking of thousands of, of people here uh, in China who sent me their statement to give to you. Anyway, but um, what we want to express to you is that human experimentation by this government is happening today that there are many thousands of people, whether they are realizing or not, are being affected, who are suffering like these people here, who are suffering like those across this country. Uh, and there are the, what you're hearing tonight is just a, a minuscule amount of what I hear on a daily basis. This is a widespread government program that is not consensual, that is affecting many, many thousands, and it is growing daily. Non-consensual federally funded human research programs are, on, are going on and need to be addressed. 1998, I got very involved in some political stuff, and I won't go into the details, but I became what's called a targeted individual, and my life has changed uh, unbelievably. Gang stalking, electromagnetic weapons, directed energy weapons. These non-compliances are a grave, pre-planned, premeditated breach of international conventions and are intentional and heinous atrocities of war crimes against humanity, domestic terrorism, domestic espionage, and genocide, and other directed energies causing physical and mental pain, suffering, and trauma. These perpetrators torture victims in their physical control. This is cruel, unusual treatment and a terroristic hate crime that damages the subject's health, finances, dignity, employability, reputation, and human property while disrupting our mental faculties. I am an eight-year victim survivor of assaults by directed energy weapons. The torture I've experienced consists of body overheating, body extremely cold, seizures, heart pain, ear aches, itching behind eyes, burning behind eyes, swelling, headaches, involuntary movement of my limbs, exhaustion, speeding and heart racing, hair coming out by the handfuls as if I've had chemotherapy, mind paralysis, being hypnotized or placed in a trance-type state, controlled dreams, sleep deprivation, B2K, which is voice to skull, projected sound, extreme muscle spasms, and extreme muscle cramps being made to fall down, low frequency noises in my home, high frequency noises in my home, sexual stimulation, numerous electrical appliances in my home are destroyed, four computers, two fax machines, seven telephones, four CD players, VCR, DVD players, electrical igniter switch on my furnace, washer and dryer, air conditioner, also my car radio, CD player, and engine were destroyed. I am receiving from a language that I read concerning this technology, it is called Medusa, developed by the Navy, is being used on me. I get burning on my lower legs and my ankles. I get ringing in my ears that's uh, pitched. It's like they, they, they pitch it. I get pulsing sensations in my body. I get an electrical current, an electrical sensation that goes up and down through my body and can be uh, isolated to different parts of my body. I have been and continue to be experimented on against my will and without my permission as a human test subject and as a targeted individual forced into trauma-based mind control programs. Medical ethics is an orphan 
in today's medical arena. It is out there in left field. They really de-emphasize it, and that's part of the continuing problem that doctors, as, as Dan said earlier when they do these studies, it's a cost-benefit analysis, and there's much more benefit to doing research, even when it breaks rules and laws and cuts corners, than by following the rules. We have the, the medical oath, and there's the Nuremberg Code that basically should ensure that nothing is done with it on without full and informed consent. These are extremely violated. United Nations Human Rights Declaration and the European Union's Human Rights Declaration are violated to an extent that is almost un unbelievable, uncomprehensible. <laughs> We're going to begin with William Binney. You worked for the National Security Agency for more than three decades. Um, almost four. Almost four decades. Yeah. Right, and I think it's to silence what's going on. But the, the point is the, the data that's being assembled is about everybody. And, and it, from that data, then they can target anyone they want. In the past, things have gone on. Do you think there is nothing going on right now? Really? Zero? Zero, zilcho, come on. If you don't think these are detailed, that they don't get information from every individual that we're talking about, this is how detailed and how powerful these programs can be. Anyone here could be manipulated at any time. Do not think anyone's above it. We need regulations. We need laws. We need things to, people to look into these regulations. Human experimentation is going on for years, but what we're talking about is so high tech, so advanced, we're not talking hospitals. We're not talking people, uh, people in psych wards, but it does include those. We're talking high tech warfare here. We're talking technological advancements beyond the human comp comprehension of the mind. We're way, way behind the comprehension of the mind. That's why they're so far ahead. That's why they can get away with it. These truths have been covered up and kept from all of us for a long time under a blanket of so-called national security. This is the same blanket of national security that has prevented us from obtaining justice despite the extensive evidences and documentation we have. We have over 27,000 documents and evidences. Government insider testimony, medical records, more than enough evidence for any legal procedure in this country, including congressional. But this blanket of national security has stopped us from obtaining justice. It's interesting how much technology exists that would find the criminals and the perpetrators of this heinous crimes of electronic harassment and terroristic tactics being used against innocent U.S. citizens on a daily basis. When this all comes out, what the American government has done to their own people, it will make Hitler look like a saint. Non-consensual experimentation is a total violation of human rights. We may not be the most eloquent speakers, but um, don't thoroughly discount us. I'm also a victim. I'm 67 years old from MK Ultra. Thank you. Thank you. We need a hearing on this. Thank you. earlier, 
in my experiences, the U.S. government has perfected or almost perfected what I'd consider the full suite of remote influencing technologies. So they have the perfected technology now for the most part. Now they have moved on to mostly what the technology does to its environment. To figure this out, they need to test what everything does on all types of people. This has produced millions of targeted individuals worldwide, no doubt, whether people know they are a TI or not. Two categories of experimentation the Black Projects probably haven't figured everything out about in are genetics and the soul. If you are potent in thwarting the shadow government's agenda on planet Earth, this merits attention. Many unfortunate souls are targeted with torture and suppression mind control. This happens both overtly and covertly. Sometimes part of targeting is using the covert transhuman control grid to control people surrounding a target to cause misfortunes for them or attack them. Part of the shadow government's agenda is to stay in power as long as possible. This means retarding societal progression as much as possible, especially spiritually and scientifically. Inherently, many musicians, artists, activists, researchers, inventors, filmmakers, scientists, and more are targeted to suppress their production. determined by his work with children that behavior is dictated uh, by fear and not love. Basically, that's his conclusion. And next one is of the big behavior scientists is uh, Hobart Mara. He put some of his students through uh, some electrocution signals, just not extremely painful, but so that they can feel them. While, and every time they were uh, having those, he switched a light on. And he determined after a while that when he switched the light on, the anticipation of the electrocution uh, signal actually produced greater anxiety and fear than when it actually came. So this is very uh, important studies for psychological torture. A punish-reward system can be covert or overt. It can include one polarity of the two categories or both. One way I know of it being used covertly is remote influencing technology and or the covert transhuman control grid used to reward targets so they organically decide that the actions being rewarded are what they would like to be doing. This type of psychological direction I call technological mind tricks or technological black magic. The shadow government explores these types of things comprehensively. In my own case, the punish system is overt. They torture me for doing things they do not want me to do. While making this documentary, I have suffered several severe electronic attacks and countless less than severe electronic attacks. One of my friends pointed out that the Black Ops AI uses forms of dog training on targets at times. A covert rewarding system can convert someone into a belief for life. It is a potent tactic used by the black ops sources with remote influencing technology.
almost all targeted individuals in their character assassination. A big reason for this is the perpetrators fear exposure, so the credibility of anyone exposing them is on the line. If anyone believes a targeted individual, some of their most illegal and horrible activities will be exposed. For this reason and others, targeted individuals and their character assassination campaigns. One example of this involves mind control and outlandish implanted beliefs about what is taking place in their life for the targeted individual. If patterns maintain the same, I expect to be character assassinated further for releasing this documentary. It doesn't get much more sensitive than the information discussed in this documentary. Some people seem to be keen to the truth that some people's minds are being controlled by an outside source. However, many interpret this influence as demonic or archontic and leave out the covert transhuman control grid influence. Remote influencing technology can create the appearance of a demon or archon possessing someone when it can be really just human military sources with advanced technology that they do not have the proper ethics to be wielding. The object behind presenting a demonic facade is to remain unseen while operating overtly. Technological possession is becoming more and more common. I understand the Vatican has reported a 100% rise in the number of requests for exorcisms over the past 15 years. I can safely say some of those cases are technological. What targeted individuals refer to as gang stalking, I would put into two main categories. Legit organized stalking, which was developed by the Stasi in Germany in tactics known as Zersetzung, and the other which is actually street theater, not gang stalking, although the target thinks they are being stalked. What takes place is thought surveillance and mind control is carried out on a target and people surrounding the target to make it seem like various individuals are somehow in on the targeted individuals targeting when they are just being mind controlled in a coordinated way, completely unaware of what they are part of. Street theater usually involves thought surveillance and various mischiefs as a result of thought surveillance and mind control done on surrounding people to a targeted individual. Common events in street theater are people reading the target's mind via mind control technology serving them such things without them knowing, people walking by and saying something that absolutely appears coordinated with the targeting when it is actually mind control, people's actions being controlled in ways that are beyond coincidence and much more. Street theater is basically having someone's experience being barraged by covert technology influencing practically all surrounding people and even at times animals, insects, and other environmental factors to the target. I have learned from my own street theater experiences that remote influencing technology can control quite a lot. microwave harassment actually on and off for a number of years where they were trying to project images of suicide and uh, various states of basically emotional mood management.
suicide programming is done to most overt targeted individuals at some point in their life. At some point people lose their usability in these programs and they are given suicide feelings, thoughts, and programming via electromagnetic technologies to promote suicide. The reason why sources like the US government do this is because the targeted individual's testimony is a liability. So once they lose their value as an experimentation subject, they would rather have the TI dead. A dead TI means they can do a new TI case with how they are strategically cornered by exposure in terms of how many people they can target. These are very dark programs. The targeted individual reality is basically a 21st century mental concentration camp. It is basically one of the most injustice-filled things happening on Earth in the 21st century. Mr. Getsis, I trust you were able to witness that. I have a theory. Pokemon brainwaves are divided into four groups. They are alpha waves, beta waves, gamma waves, and delta waves. Using electromagnetic waves to create stress in the test subject, we increase its power to maximum potential. Previously, the EM waves emitted by this device affected any nearby Pokemon. Now, we can target specific test subjects thanks to numerous upgrades. The key to the success of this device is that it suppresses the alpha waves while amplifying the gamma and delta waves. I've succeeded in targeting a specific Pokémon and maximizing its power. And they're under our control at all times. control of the mind is not something new. It's thousands of years old. It's recorded in caves. It's, re it's recorded the exact formula for trauma-based mind control in the Egyptian Book of the Dead. Adolf Hitler was particularly interested in, in mind control and he assigned his right-hand man, Heinrich Himmler, to do some research. Now back when I was working for the Defense Department in a project known as MK Ultra, which was the exact um, uh, project that Adolf Hitler assigned Himmler to do. But I was put into that job after months and months and months of psychological examinations because they knew I could keep a secret. I was given a Defense Department clearance. I didn't, I knew about the Heinrich Himmler studies for Adolf Hitler, and I knew that Adolf Hitler wanted to develop some very serious people to put in places to control various regions in what he called, and George Bush called, and Nero called, the New World Order. You see, Adolf Hitler was not the first nor was George Bush to fantasize about this hideous idea of totalitarian government enslaving an entire globe through mind manipulation. What Adolf Hitler began in his adamant research on, he had the largest number of human subjects from which to work and, and do his horror on. And it was even accepted by most of the people in his country.
that these prisoners of war were indeed to be subjected to anything that he chose that would better his country. Well, MK Ultra took on the same took on the same uh, scientist because in 1947 when the National Security Act was formed there was a project that was developed called Project Paperclip. The operations that where the Americans wanted and British wanted the brain trust of the Germans was called Paperclip. That's uh, the most famous of them. There, there were other projects like Project 63 and National Interests that did the same. About 2,000 of the most, uh, the highest scientists in Germany were all moved to the US. At Nuremberg, the Allies prosecute leading Nazi officials for these crimes against humanity. Some of the most dangerous war criminals are brought to justice, but not all. There's a myth about Nazis, and that is, is that there's these horrible people that committed these terrible crimes, and then after 1945 simply disappeared. Well, that simply isn't true. The truth is that thousands of former Nazis, some of whom committed atrocities, went to work for the United States government without the public's knowledge. The Cold War had an unlikely battleground, the human brain. There's been thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of people subjected to really damaging unethical experimentation. In June 1951, a top secret CIA memo expressed the need to explore, quote, scientific methods for controlling the minds of individuals, unquote. Testing those so-called scientific methods would require thousands of men and women who became unwitting subjects in experiments ranging from the unusual to the bizarre. They were horrendously damaging experiments, and uh, in fact, they just didn't give a damn about the people who were the subjects of them. These are not scenes made up in the mind of a novelist or a screenwriter. They are recreations of actual events, examples of top-secret mind-control experiments funded by the United States government. This is way out of the realm of fiction or supposition or conspiracy theory or speculation. This is absolute documented fact. The goal of these experiments is to determine if the human mind can be controlled using outside forces, drugs, electroshock, hypnosis. Post-World War II research, there was still a big interest in behavior modification, interrogation, truth drugs, Manchurian candidates, unwitting spies, chemical weapons, and biological weapons. Especially the behavioral modification, and interrogations, and truth drugs there was a big brain trust by the Germans. The CIA and US military um, established a lot of research projects that were cl highly classified at the time. Here's a list of them. Most people have heard of MKUltra, uh, but there was a whole list of other projects. I'll just skip very qu quickly through them. So. Bluebird and Artichoke were the two first ones, and they were very significant. They started 1950, before the Korean War. The Americans often claim that the, the reason for their mind control programs and behavior modification programs was because the Koreans had used it, so they needed to look into it. But they actually started before that. By 1954, they had fully-fledged Manchurian candidates. This means people who will kill, who will get hypnotized to do atrocious acts like shooting other people, carrying bombs, and have complete amnesia about it. They would, and th this is documented in their own documents. About 20,000 documents have been released in the Freedom of Information Act uh, requests. And that there, this is fully documented that those were operational in 1954. Project Chatter, I'll just skip through. QK Hilltop, 
MK delta. Some of them have to do with different aspects of it. Some of them, the chemicals, the hypnosis, the foreign things, Europe, East, etc., etc. Chickweed, often. MK Naomi, Stargate. Sleeping Beauty is a project that was not confirmed. It's referenced in other documents, but all Freedom of Information Acts uh, are denied, and it has to do especially with remote influencing with the electronic signals. MK Ultra and MK Search were umbrella projects. That's why they are the most known ones. MK Ultra had 149 sub-projects, and that was a, all kinds of different experiments. The MK Ultra program, also some of the sub-projects had to do with electronic implants. Sub-projects 61, 129, 94, and 142. In the 1960s, Professor Jose Delgado took a normally hostile bull and implanted electrodes into its brain. Electrodes that could be activated by a radio transmitter. His objective was to see if stimulation of the bull's midbrain could short circuit the rage signals, stopping the bull before it reached the matador. After the bull had recovered from the implantation and in mid charge, the button was pressed. The bull's aggression ceased and the bull's aggression ceased instantly. A clearer experiment was performed with cats. In this classic example, the hypothalamus, the rhythm maker, was implanted with electrodes. Could it be responsible not just for rhythms, but also for rage? The switch is turned. Then the switch is turned off. So indeed, the hypothalamus does control certain types of aggression. As one of them told me who was involved in this, he said, we didn't want to do it on, on housewives in suburbia. We chose the people in society who could offer the least resistance and who would be least likely to expose it, or if they did expose it, it would be least likely to be believed. Thousands of government-sponsored experiments did take place at hospitals, universities, and military bases around our nation. Some were unethical, not only by today's standards, but by the standards of the time in which they were conducted. They failed both the test of our national values and the test of humanity. The United States of America offers a sincere apology to those of our citizens who were subjected to these experiments, to their families, and to their communities.
by my experiences as well as logic, I can safely say that no being with a brain is immune to electromagnetic mind control. However, there are ways to be resistant to it or immune to some levels of the tactics used by dark sources using these technologies. A wiser soul will reject more faulty programmings when organically reviewing them than a more intermediate soul. That is, if the soul is part of the discernment process at any given time. There are less options for control for people with programming resistant to mind control matrices and technological illusions, and that is mostly based on awareness of such things. A lot of defenses for mind control are based on the perpetrator's fear of being caught and producing another whistleblower of mind control. Basically, they fear being caught so someone more aware of mind control may limit what the black ops sources do to them, just like virtual reality and synthetic dreams. If you are aware of synthetic dreams, that limits their options in manipulating you in a big way. Some aspects of the covert transhumanism era. Suppression and targeting of higher souls. Acute societal engineering. Thought surveillance numbers growing by the day. Remote influencing technology used commonly on the population. That is, mind control, synthetic dreams, technological illusions, etc. Technology, rigged professional sports and rigged national elections in many ways. Constant stream of psyops being perpetrated. The transhuman network, also the electronic telepathy network. Transhumanism fueled application of dark eugenics. New age religion, replacing old false paradigms with new false paradigms. Infiltration of the field of ufology experiencers. Themes of controlled opposition and false light sources. And the transhumanization of society. The shadow government is a multi-headed hydra. I won't be covering all aspects of the shadow government as that could fill its own entire documentary. The part of the shadow government I expose the most is the military and intelligence agency sources who develop the advanced technology behind the scenes in black projects and use it profoundly unethically on the population.
Other targeted individuals and myself have witnessed large portions of city populations controlled methodically during their targeting. It is bar none fact that the governments around the world have studied the brain and the mind. Whistleblowers like Robert Duncan will tell you that these mind control programs continued after MK Ultra. What's next after research? Implementation. Highly advanced electromagnetic technologies are being used on the population under a corrupted dark agenda. Common facades used by black ops sources with remote influencing technology. Demons, jinn, interdimensional beings, extraterrestrials, archangels, Satan, Lucifer, entity attachments, shadow beings, Ra, Jesus, and God Allah Yahweh. Any being in existence and even fictional beings can be impersonated via electromagnetic technology. Basically, the shadow government has a secret society of sorts and an electronic telepathy network. Electronic telepathy is also used in malicious acts like getting targeted individuals diagnosed as schizophrenic while they are experimented on, and also contacting people within society to threaten, intimidate, and control them, as reported in Dr. Robert Duncan's book. Electronic telepathy is also used to feign extraterrestrial or interdimensional being contact in societal engineering and predictive programming psyops. What the Black Projects found was that exotic electromagnetic methods pairing with a human can produce in the mind of the target any concept in existence, any image in existence, any sound in existence, any color in existence, any thought form in existence and any conscious energy in existence. The Black Ops sources have access to every concept and conscious energy in existence after properly mapping electromagnetics with electronic telepathy. This will be proven to the public hopefully in my lifetime.
When I say Manchurian candidates, I mean lifelong groomed assets of the shadow government. People stuck in a lifelong created mind control matrix, which part of a mind control matrix at times can be an implanted belief system. I have zero doubt most U.S. presidents are Manchurian candidates in this day and age. I have witnessed being an enemy of the transhuman control grid, aka the transhuman network. It isn't pretty. The transhuman network especially targets alternative media and conspiracy realists. Reason for this being someone who can be mind controlled externally by mundane mind control techniques such as mainstream media do not require as much attention as someone who is not as easily controllable. The contactee field is rampant with transhumanism in my educated estimates. I have personally seen the kind of illusions and psyops being implanted into society by black ops contactees and deceptive AI based channelers as I have had the sources of such things try to convince me of the same things. The transhuman network is vast and those who control it are the most powerful in the world. Due to not wanting to make this video too long, I have cut this segment of the documentary short. If you would like to explore these topics further, I recommend downloading or buying my book, Covert Transhumanism, Mind Control Explained. It is offered in free PDF form and hard copy.
By telling their secrets, their power is eroding.